Welcome back to the news today. This is the daily debate. The debate in Israel this uh, week has been focused on one burning issue. Dozens of uh, veterans of an elite Israeli military signal intelligence unit have said they will no longer serve in operations against Palestinians. 43 past and present uh, reservists uh, signed a letter about Unit 8200, which carries out electronic surveillance and is considered one of the most important units in the IDF. It has become a familiar phenomenon here in Israel over the past few years and is relevant for every military and society around the world. And joining me tonight uh, to understand more about the subject is Eitan Meyersdorf uh, of uh, Im Tirzu. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming. An extra uh, parliamentary Zionist movement. And also peace activist Dr. Noam Livne. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, before we will start uh, discussing this uh, matter, uh, gentlemen, uh, let's uh, take a look on the public opinion on the issue with our viewers around the world. Nurit, what our viewers had to say about that. Good evening, Lucy. So you already gave an introduction to this issue, which is creating a firestorm in Israel and is also relevant around the world to militaries around the world. So we asked our viewers, should soldiers express their dissent with the military in public? So let's take a look first at the poll, which was quite extreme this time around. 84% said, no, this should be done in private. Only 14% said yes. So let's take a look at the arguments, which were sort of divided 50-50 in terms of comments. Jean-Luc said, not publicly. The army is not theater in private. Yes. I want to take a a comment also from our French channel because uh, she referenced something uh, sort of with a previous perception of the army. M.A. says, l'armée c'est la grande muette, meaning uh, referring to a term that was once used to describe the French army, that it is the place of silence. People do not speak of the army. It's an entirely private thing. Soldiers don't speak. She goes on to say, discretion is essential for a victory. Mary also says, no, it should be dealt with only with superiors in the army. Let's take a look at the other side, uh, people who said this, it's time to sort of confront reality that things are public these days. Sarah said, yes, it's time things change. The army doesn't need to be sacred. It must question itself. So very opposite to the other uh, comments that we just heard. Robert Brosnan said, yes, there's freedom of thought and to give opinions in Israel like the rest of the world. So he brings this up as a simple issue of democracy. Yaniv wrote to us from Tel Aviv and said, some of the orders the IDF gives are not legal. I remind you, he writes from Tel Aviv, and it concerns the occupied territories because the occupation isn't legal under international law. This, of course, is a subject I'm sure you'll be discussing in terms of the actual content of the complaint of, this, uh, of the soldiers of this elite unit. And let's just end on Mike, who said, if the grievance is serious enough, of course, we live in the age of WikiLeaks and Snowden, he says both governments and militaries must act accordingly. So maybe we need to, uh, there's a, a division here between the sort of old school traditional view and uh, the progressives who say the army has changed. So I'll send it back to you. Yes, uh, definitely. And we thank you very much uh, for this. So we heard, uh, gentlemen, our viewers, and they are divided. Like everyone maybe will be divided on this uh, matter. You know, both of you, let's put the record, record straight. Both of you served in the army. Both of you went to, to elite uh, units. Both of you gave your time, let's say in one way or another, to the country and served the country and defended the country. But one of you is not seeing anything bad in it. And one of you is uh, seeing that some things went wrong on the way. You don't question uh, sometimes uh, what you did in the army you don't uh, ask yourself questions and say okay some things I cannot maybe handle or I cannot even believe that I did well not at all actually everything we did I found they adhere to the highest level of human rights or whatever you want to call it I remember even times at checkpoints we did stuff that were hinder our ability to protect ourselves and the Israeli citizens just to protect the human rights and I think it's the opposite you see you could even go on the IDF's channel you go to YouTube and you see all the air the Air Force strikes are called off because you see a child there it's obvious it's not we're not hiding anything there's stuff it's clear that IDF does the most that any army ever does to defend civilian casualties and of course it happens there are but we do that we do our best that's what's important you ask yourself a lot of times what did I do there um, yes and I also answer my answer is that um, I think uh, the army does immoral things in the occupied territories. Um, even more, I think the whole mission of the army in the territories is immoral. And it's not just the issue of a particular point, you know, is this roadblock justified or not? Was the treatment of this Palestinian right or not? 
the whole big picture is wrong. There is one people occupying another people. That's the big picture. And everything we do there, or let's say 90% of what we do there, is maintain the occupation. And this I know from first person. It's not something I read. It's something I saw with my eyes. So, you know, you started asking yourself these questions when you left the army because you were there. You yeah. did what you did or didn't do what you didn't do. And you started asking this by getting a bigger perspective when you went out of the army and you started maybe seeing the entire picture because it is different. Like the, the, the arena is different. The public arena is different than the military arena. Yes, but the, but there was also the issue of the time. When I was in the in the mandatory service, um, there was during the Oslo process, you know, and uh, it seemed like the occupation is about to end. It seemed like it's like we're on the verge of of you know solving this whole issue. And in this particular setting, I thought it's you know okay to just see that everything is. It's you going know, to be solved, and I'm doing yeah, my job. And, and I'm just, you know, just to maintain the situation, you know, until we, we, we sign the peace agreement, and you know, and, and then everything changed. I enlisted from the army. The second intifada started, and when I came back, and the first time they called me for a reserve service, I, you know, I said, "What? What are they calling for me for? What, what am I summoned for? What, what? What am I supposed to do there?" You know, some people um, may uh, call uh, Noam, uh, Dr. Livne here, a uh, traitor. They will call him that, uh, they will say that he is not uh, uh, loyal to his uh, country, that uh, he is uh, breaking maybe every kind of um, moral rule that uh, you live when you love your country and you want to serve it. Do you see it when you, when you hear him as a person who served in an in, in elite unit and served his country, do you see it the same way that maybe he is a traitor? No, I don't see him as a traitor by any means. I just see him as someone that I think is, according to me, is misinformed. Basically, it's, it's really important when we talk about why we're there, the occupation, to realize why we're there, not just say there is an occupation. Because, again, you said the second Tafada happened, but whose fault was that? What happened? It's not like we haven't tried in 2000 in Annapolis with Barack and 2007 in Annapolis, I'm sorry, 2000 in Camp David and 2007 David. with Olmert. It's not like we're not trying. So to say that because we're occupying there means that Israel is bad, that's just a really dip it's a problematic understanding because it's just factually not true. In, in, you know, one of the biggest questions is the, that came out in the, the disengagement, uh, the unilateral disengagement uh, from uh, the Gaza Strip was uh, asking uh, how um, Jews can evacuate Jews. How, if you will be asked to evacuate Jews in order to end the occupation, in order that Israel mm -hmm. will try to end maybe the suffering of other people, will you, will you do that? Honestly, I'm not prepared to answer on a hypothetical theoretical question. If the time comes, then I'll, have a, I'll decide myself, but it's not something that I'm going to answer now on a whim. That's <laughs> it's because, it, it, you know, in, in one way, it's the same dilemma. It's, uh, he has a different dilemma, and you has, have a different dilemma in one way or another, and, and, and it is facing moral questions. Can I um, take my brother out of his house, and can he take, maybe not his brother, but his cousin, in uh, one way or another, out of his house and, and act in an immoral way? So I'm trying to understand maybe better the let's say, the moral um, equation that we're talking about here. Will you accept to do that? Will I want you? just before that to respond very shortly on what you said and say that, um, you know, it's, there's, not, there's no one opinion about what happened in Camp David in Annapolis. And, you know, it's two sides. I, I think two, both sides uh, made mistakes. But I, I think what we cannot argue about, about is about the settlements. There, there are the settlements in the occupied territories, and if we claim that we are there to, to defend ourselves, why are there the, the settlements there? There is no justification for that. You have to come with your, you know, you, you have to come clean if you want to, to, to argue that, you know, we have to do it. We're forced to do it because we have to defend ourselves. So the, the, the truth is that Israel wants this land, the resources, she wants to um, rule the territories, 
And all the rest is, is you know, an excuse. May I? Yes, it's actually good you mentioned the settlements because if it's okay, I actually brought a copy of the letter, which I printed from the New York Times because this is where it's doing the damage. The New York Times, The Guardian, The Daily Mail, The Daily mm -hmm. Croissant, whatever European paper they have. So it's, it's funny because they actually wrote, I circled here, it says, this reality is not an inevitable result of the state's effort to protect itself, but rather the result of choice. Settlement expansion has nothing to do with national security. And again, they mentioned settlements in a couple of places here, but the thing is, though, their problem was with spying on the Palestinians. So they're saying, on the one hand, they have a human rights difficulty with doing what they have to do on the Palestinians, and they're saying, and by the way, the settlements is wrong. So we kind of see here the really the gist of it, and it's not a human, it's not a moral thing. It's that they just don't like Israel's policy, which is fine. But again, it's not something that they're saying, oh, we did something wrong, we're doing, a, you, we're doing something wrong, because why do they, how can they limit it to the, like, Palestinian but territory? But it's not that about just Syria, don't about like the, the Israel come? policy. They don't like the Israel policy because this policy is about ruling another people. But it is come? human rights. If it's human rights, how come they didn't include Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, because any other not country? Occupying people what does there? it matter? Human rights is you're putting on a pedestal saying this is right or wrong. So if it's right or wrong for one people, it should be right or wrong for another because people as well. Because it's percepted as, as self-defense. When we are spying uh, against the Syrians, it's to defend ourselves. We, we don't have any interest uh, in the Syrian uh, la land. We do have interest in the occupied territories, and we, we fulfill these interests. We, we settle Jews there, so you there know, is my, a motive. My question that I'm trying to, to answer myself all day is, why now? Why not to go like during when you are spying on someone? You know, one of the biggest uh, maybe reasons that they talked about is um, maybe using uh, someone who is not involved to put him in a certain uh, situation, like using maybe gay uh, Palestinian mm. people uh, against their own uh, families so they will get information from them. And we know that it always ends in a really bad way. But why now? Why when they did, when they listened, when they uh, did surveillance uh, uh, after the, these gay people that are not connected to anything and are being used, why not saying, okay, I'm putting my papers down, I'm not willing to jeopardize the lives of someone else because you need the information, because I know that this guy is going to die just sooner or later. Why now? Why after? The reason, you know, it's a generic question. You can ask anyone who, you know, corrects his way, why now? Because that's when you understood, that's when you, you gather the strength. Now in Israel, everyone, uh, and especially every male that grew in Israel knows how they kind of grow and, you know, from day zero, you're kind of tamed to go to the army. And there's a whole system of indoctrination and movies and songs and everywhere. And they talk in the kindergarten and, and everywhere to go to the army. And you come to the army full of testosterone, just ready to do whatever mission you're asked to do. And you're young and stupid. I was stupid, like every 18 years old man, I was stupid. And I was not, and you know, and, and also you're very intimidated. You know, you come to the army, you're a, whole, a small, small particle in a bunch of, you know, people. And you have this commander is like half God and he's telling you what to do. And you, 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 you kind of ab you get absorbed in the system. And only a lot of people, only after they go out and kind of, you know, grow up a little and, and see and, and you know, they, they gather the strength and the, and the kind of the, the wider view and then they, you know, they're real adults and now they can uh, think You know, our responsibility and... as uh, people who are living in a certain society is always to enlighten the people that we are living with, that uh, to enlighten maybe sometimes the government. Uh, we think that we're seeing and maybe the government doesn't want to see it. Um, in one way or another, that the other question that I am asking today is uh, part of the reasons that uh, the IDF today is uh, looking into each and every, uh, let's say, uh, thing that is happening in the in the IDF it's because people put a spot on it because people said things are going wrong in the IDF the IDF is not behaving the way that it should behave and you know what maybe it is the responsibility of us maybe this is our responsibility as people who are living in the society to say okay just a second I know what happened there this is my time to show you that you can correct it and you can do it in a different way well there are definitely ways to go about this first of all there's so many ways especially in in 8200 it's definitely a unit built after the 73 war where they failed to see one of the biggest 
or whatever you want to call it, that happened, uh, military misses, intelligence misses, I'm sorry, in history, that it's very open to criticism. It's very open to you go to your commander. Even me, I was just served as a regular infantry man, and I could go to the, what's called Katsina Air. You just go and you place your complaint, and they file it. The, the military, we're in democracy. In democracy, it's not a anarchy that everyone do, says whatever they want. It's that there's a set way of doing things, and it is proven to You know, to but be. it was the public opinion that ended the Vietnam War. It was uh, people were going outside and mm -hmm. saying, Things are going wrong that ended wars or wars around the world. So if we are living in a democracy and we are not should not say anything, this is a little bit strange. Well, we see that the, the, the vast democracies we've seen them for is definitely against it. Eighty-four percent of people are pro the army, pro doing it the way of the army. So there's no way to say that the, the majority of the people are for this or for you know refusing. So there's again, uh, what a democracy is is obviously people have the freedom of press, but there's the question is they have an ultimate goal of achieving something, which is to actually get the army to do something. Is going like this going to do something? Is having the New York Times report about it going to really yeah. do something? No, these these organizations like breaking silence, they just they really meant to slander Israel. And why? Do thing, why you know, do I, I have want, a, why do you think I, I have only to... 60 minutes, unfortunately. <laughs> but but I'm really say... glad. I'm really really glad that you were able to talk about it and not fight about it. Thank you very much uh, for this. We're going out for a small break, two minutes, and then we will.